Under de sista 20-30 åren så har vi förlorat flera hundratusen, kanske miljoner växtsorter. Och det är genetiskt material vi har förlorat för alltid. I think of diversity as giving us options. And when we look at the future, and we look at a future in which we have to produce more food with less land, less water, probably less nutrients in the form of fertilizers, and in the context of climate change, options are what we need. Svalbard, 61,000 square kilometers of Arctic desert. Snow, ice, cold, permafrost immediately below the surface the perfect freezer for the storage of green diversity. Inside the Svalbard Global Seed Vault, backup copies of seeds from the world's most important food crops are stored. Agriculture today depends on just a few different food crops. Wheat, maize and rice alone make up as much as 60%. Around the world, only about 150 different species are cultivated on a large scale. These figures hide an important fact. Within each species, there is a great range of variation. You can see it in the color, shape, size and taste. But most important is what you can't see. Different nutritional content and different capacity to tolerate cold, drought, pest attack and illness. This biological diversity is the result of nature's own mutations and our systematic choice of seeds with the properties we want to encourage. This genetic inheritance may provide the basis for providing enough food to the world's growing population. Right now, it's beginning to disappear. Valvet here in Svalbard är en del av ett globalt system för att rädda de genetiska resurserna för framtiden. Valvet ligger placerat här på Svalbard av väldigt många olika skäl. Klimatiskt är det nästan till idealt. Det är kallt, det är permafrost, det är minus 4 till minus 6 grader kontinuerligt in i berget. Det är en arktisk öken, det är torrt, vilket är väldigt bra för bevarande av frö. Svalbard är den ideala placeringen för ett globalt frövalv. Svalbards global seed vault is built to withstand an extreme future. Even if all the ice on Greenland were to melt, the vault lies safely above estimated sea levels. The vault is blasted from solid rock and the halls reinforced with concrete. Here, 120 meters inside Plateau Mountain, the permafrost and the rock are stable. The natural temperature is minus 3.5 degrees all year round. But this is not cold enough, for seeds need minus 18 degrees for long-term storage. That's why the mountain rock around the storage halls was mechanically frozen down before any seeds were brought in. There are many reasons that make the valve so safe. It's a very technically advanced project. Det är geografiskt, det är politiskt, det är klimatiskt ett väldigt stabilt område. För vi måste kunna garantera högsta möjliga säkerhet för fröna. För här inne ligger något av det viktigaste vi har för människans överlevnad.
Det här är säkert kopierna av ris, av majs, av korn, av reta, av råg, av ärtor, av bönor. Mer än 720 000 fröprover och mer än 4 000 arter. Alla de viktigaste matplanterna i världen. Fröna här inne de ägs av den genback som har deponerat fröna. Norge äger anläggningen och står för driften. Men bara den genbank som har deponerat material kan få ut sitt material härifrån och använda det. Now all the seeds are stored safely here, each with its own story to tell. Amaemba as a Farmers are really the custodians of biodiversity. Farmers have been growing their crops and they, throughout the process they have been selecting seed. They do not grow all the seed that they, they hold. They tend to save some seed just in case the season fails. Behaving like, like that, they have uh, ensured that biodiversity, uh, their biodiversity is not lost. There are several challenges that Kenyan farmers face when it comes to uh, crop production. With the changing climate, seasons are now becoming more and more unreliable. As if that is not enough, there are other biotic stresses to the plants they grow. Diseases, pests, uh, again this is becoming more and more severe with the changing uh, environment. When you get new challenges, new diseases coming in, it is in the seed bank that you get the jump plasm that you need to develop other varieties that now will uh, be able to address uh, that problem. There are around 1400 known gene banks around the world. These are active collections. That is to say, they are regularly used by plant breeders and farmers to develop new, better varieties. The same happens in Norway. At Stauer Research Center outside Hamar, breeders use traditional plant varieties to develop new types of grain, potatoes and berries for the tough Norwegian climate. Foredling av matplanter det är en lång och omständlig process. Ett av de överordnade målen det är att kombinera goda gener för de goda egenskaperna som vi ska är ute efter och försöka kombinera dem in i en och samma planten. Det är så fint ut. Det är inte en prova. Och det är inte alls som tänker på att det är variation i sorter och att det är en process för att lage det materialet som vi har att spela på. Men det är alltså ett nitidigt arbete för att hela tiden förbättra sorts material. Grundlaget för förädlingsarbete i väldigt stor grad är 
basert på den langsiktige processen fra de gamle landsortene med oppbygging av egenskaper kontinuerlig. Og genbankens rolle har hele tiden vært å ta vare på opprinnelsesmaterialet, altså de, de landsortene, de mellomproduktene og de gamle sortene som er utviklet etter hvert. Det globale frøvelvet på Svalbard, det er jo i særdeleshet en en siste skanse på et vis. Men den daglige foredlingsprosessen er nok ikke avhengig av den, for det er det de bruksgenbankene som skal tas av. Så vi håper faktisk ikke at, at vi skal ha behov for den praktiske bruken til å prøve det, men at det skal være den store sikkerheten for fremtiden. The materials that gene banks uh, conserve are not in a museum. They are utilized from time to time. And in the process, the sample is depleted. So when the sample size becomes small, you need to go out and regenerate to bulk it, make the materials are still available for other use. Seeds are first registered and cleansed of all impurities. After drying for three weeks at 20 degrees, germination capacity is checked. More than 80% of the seeds must germinate to make storing them worthwhile. Then the seeds are packed in bags and put in long-term storage at minus 18 degrees. Seeds are living matter. They need stable, controlled storage to remain capable of germination. This makes gene banks vulnerable. Power cuts, financial cutbacks, natural disasters or conflicts can have dramatic consequences. Other than the high cost of maintenance of the facilities, the Kenyan Genie Bank has not faced uh, another challenge. But I'm aware uh, our neighboring country, Somali, when they had uh, the war, the, the Genie Bank was invaded. There are around 1,400 known seed collections around the world. Many of these lie in politically unstable regions or in areas prone to natural disasters. Every year, significant seed collections are lost. The Svalbard Global Seed Vault provides us with the opportunity of maintaining a backup copy of the materials that we are conserving here. Just in case we lose uh, our materials through a natural disaster or anything, we can get the jumpers back. Scientists in Kenya are preparing a new consignment of seed to Svalbard. This time we are sending seeds of cow peas, pigeon peas, finger millet, and the 500 accessions of sorghum that we have just bulked with the, one of our farmers, Mr. Chris Santos Amenya. Ladies and gentlemen, please be welcome on board this flight to Amsterdam. We expect nice flying weather, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight. Seeds to be stored in the vault on Svalbard first come to Oslo for temporary storage. When enough seed boxes have been collected, they are sent north to storage in the vault. Some years ago, some of the large seed banks in the world uh, got together and they inquired of the Norwegian government if the government of Norway could look at the feasibility of establishing a seed bank here to provide them with a safety backup and insurance policy for their collections. Previous to that, there had been some discussion of doing that, but we didn't have any kind of international legal framework. However, the international um, treaty on plant genetic resources had been passed 
And so all of a sudden, we had the conditions for international cooperation, the rules for having such a facility, and Norway um, noted that and uh, decided to establish this facility. Like everything in the world, you always need a plan B. What if something goes wrong? And Svalbard is the answer for that. If something goes wrong in any of the seed banks around the world that are conserving crop diversity, we have a backup copy here. I'm going to go to the hospital.